Well, this is a video from the Hanging Photographer. I hope to give you, after having looked at other videos and seen how horrible and uh, most of them inaccurate are, the most uh, complete, easy explanation of uh, the advantages and disadvantages of both FX and DX sensors. All of this is uh, keeping in mind that uh, beginning the middle of next year, the end of next year, uh, many of the disadvantages of FX sensors will have... Uh, been uh, have been erased by the introduction of uh, DX density uh, FX or IE full frame sensors. Um, that is what the future holds both for Nikon and for Canon. Um, obviously pixel density is going to go up to DX density and it's going to have an image sensor that is going to be full frame. But in the current state of technology and also uh, some of the disadvantages of the full frame sensor with DX uh, density is still going to have some disadvantages in the future. However, much of that has been mitigated already now by algorithms and uh, also by compression factors by changing the signal to noise ratio of, uh, of the signal. Um, let's do a quick analogy to make things really simple for people. Um, I'm actually a ham radio operator. I have been now for 20 some years. Um, you know the uh, the uh, satellite dishes that are out in the desert. Now there's a huge array. It's called the VLA, the very large array. They're huge satellite dishes. Now what people figured out, obviously, very sensibly, that instead of a huge satellite dish, you could actually have a number of much smaller, less expensive arrays and uh, said formation and actually change the compression using software and algorithm to increase better signal to noise ratio. Let's just talk about this as an analogy in comparison to um, pixel density on an FX sensor versus a DX sensor. Okay, Make things really simple. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen Yagi antennas, anybody that's... You don't see them on people's rooftops anymore. I mean, everybody gets cable and satellite now, but ultimately, Yagi antenna is no different than a satellite dish. Uh, most of them are three elements. Um, back in the day, you have a reflector, you have uh, a director, and then you have the driver element. And this is not only for increased reception, directionality, but also for transmission. Obviously, your uh, FX and DX sensor aren't transmitting anything, but bear with me for a second on making a quick analogy. Now, as is the case, don't you love old technology and new technology? I'm using 100-year-old slate boards, and I'm using an iPad at the same time. Some people have uh, scoffed at this. Um, let's take a look at FX sensor here on the left. Digital camera sensors actually contain micro lenses above and around each photo site. If you want to call a photo site a pixel, not to confuse things, to enhance your light gathering capability. These lenses are analogous to the funnels which direct photons, actually not photons, it's the EM packet itself. Um, photon is uh, an abstraction of quantum mechanics and general relativity, but that's a point for another discussion. They direct these bundles of light, let's make it simple, into the photosites or the pixels where the photons or the light packets would have otherwise gone unused. Real-world camera sensors do not actually have pixels or photosites which can cover, cover the entire uh, surface of the sensor. Even on uh, the best uh, FX uh, sensors, full-frame sensors, uh, the actual coverage of the photo sites, so the pixels, is anywhere between 50-60% of coverage. What happens is exactly like a Yagi antenna, here's a Yagi antenna, which remember is really no different than a satellite dish. A satellite dish obviously increases signal to noise ratio. You got a direct TV or you have a dish network satellite on your roof or out in your backyard. It is uh, concentrating the signal for very excellent signal to noise ratio. Okay, here we have our directors. They're little micro lenses that are actually on the FX sensor that are actually if you have light coming in it's actually doing this number so you can actually register a strike and a signal which is fed through the analog digital converter which is fed through the processor which ultimately goes to your compact flash card or your SD card over here for example we have a DX sensor okay 
We don't have reflectors, directors, or drivers. We just have, I don't know if you were rubber, rubber ducky. You remember the old uh, handheld talkie radios that had a little rubber ducky antenna? Basically, the very crude and simplex analogy of an FX sensor versus a DX sensor. While you have advantages and disadvantages on both, you have enormous SNR. Although some of that, a lot of that has actually been mitigated in current production like the D7200 which has really good high ISO SNR but that is, a lot of that is algorithm and compression firmware that is actually, as per our other analogy, where you're actually able to take a lot of really small satellite dishes and accomplish the same thing as a huge ass, insanely expensive satellite dish. But that's firmware. Okay. No, everything obviously ultimately registers as image quality. So people don't care if it's coming from the sensor or if it's becoming from if it's coming from a time compression algorithm or the firmware um, that's actually uh, amplifying uh, the signal to reduce the noise and increase better SNR on the on the DX sensor. But as is the case on the FX sensor, the digital camera sensors contain micro lenses above and around which the pixels enhance the low light gathering capability. Now, like I said, you obviously are probably not a ham radio operator. But let's just look at a gaggy. Please bear with me. I'll make this very simple. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of why DX sensors are uh, good and bad and why FX sensors are good and bad. Over here we have a reflector element. We have a driver element and we have a director element. Now this is used both for reception and transmission. Like back in the day if you wanted to talk to somebody and zone everybody else out you would actually point it in the direction that you want. You would actually dial it in with an antenna motor. Back in the days when obviously everything was broadcast locally, of course and everything, everybody now is getting either satellite or has cable. Nobody wants to mess around with antennas for obvious and logical reasons. But, you know, light is light. There's no such thing as a digital image. Humans can only see light. So there's no such thing as a digital image. It is only a storage and transmission methodology. Nobody has ever seen a digital image. Okay, obviously and logically so. Human eyeballs have nothing to do with digital images, nor do your ears can hear digital sounds. Everything the human experience knows is analog. The only difference, obviously, is storage and transmission methodology, transport of that signal. So reception of the signal, this is exactly the same thing as an inverted funnel. Now, people would think of a funnel, obviously, as gathering light like this, drawing something in. A uh, Yagi antenna is just the inverse. You can just think of an inverted funnel that acts like a funnel. We have a reflector element, a driver, and a director, which increases signal to noise ratio. Now, if we take a look at our FX sensor over here on the left, we have the same thing as a Yagi antenna, except it's on your FX sensor. Why is this important? Because we have increased dynamic range. We have much better signal to noise ratio because like the big satellite dishes instead of the little rubber ducky, and everybody knows what a rubber ducky is, you're a little child, you get a little handheld radio okay, a little handheld radio you had a pair of them, a pair of walkie talkies you'd actually get like this, okay, they had a little rubber ducky antenna, you know, you'd talk to Bobby, Bobby'd talk to Billy back and forth, it's a rubber ducky antenna, it doesn't have very good gain okay what does have very good gain is something that has directionality. Okay? That is why an FX sensor, nobody talks about these digital camera sensors, the full frame ones, have micro lenses above and around every one of the pixels to enhance their light gathering capability. It's the same thing in a Yagi antenna. Okay? We have a driver. The driver element would be the photosight or the pixel that registers the signal, which gets digitally processed, obviously. Okay? We have the reflector, and we have the director. Up here, all of these little strikes up here act as drivers. So if you have light coming in here, and it's not going directly into the pixel point, it gets directed there, okay, just like a funnel. But the photo sites of the pixels are not funnel. It's an expression of signal over time. Why is the big satellite dish important? 
versus that of a rubber ducky. And nobody's got a rubber ducky sitting on the outside of their house gathering in uh, their uh, direct TV signal from the 400 gigahertz, uh, 400 megahertz, excuse me, uh, satellite dishes that are uh, orbiting around the Earth. They've got satellite dishes up there. It's about improved SNR, signal to noise ratio. This is where FX sensors are superior to DX sensors. But a lot of that has been mitigated by firmware and SNR uh, time compression. The same way that uh, astro radio astrophysicists finally figured out that, well, instead of building this gigantic $100 million gigantic dish and putting a ton of them out there, we could just actually take a lot of these little cheap suckers, build them in their array, and achieve the same thing, but include software and signal processing to achieve the same thing from these dozen or so dishes as one large dish achieves. A lot cheaper, a lot faster. All you have to do is apply algorithms and compression, time compression, so that you have awesome SNR. Obviously, everything is about noise. Let me see. Let me go back to here. On the right, of course, we have our DX sensor. Trust me, things are going to get really simple very quick. Just hold with me a little bit. Larger photo sites, like we have here on the left on our FX sensor, is just like a Yagi antenna. They have higher light gain and better, therefore, dynamic range and ISO latitude. But like I've said, a lot of that has been fixed by compression, time compression, algorithm uh, technology, uh, like on the D7200, which has really awesome high ISO performance. But nothing can ultimately replace large photo sites or large pixels. But there's only so many of those you can cram on an FX sensor, of course. This is why wildlife shooters and bird shooters that are shooting $20,000 lenses aren't using FX sensors. Well, some of them do. If you want to resolve that, you're going to have to use um, smaller pixel density, higher pixel density, excuse me, like on a DX sensor. These larger photo sites, just like the Yagi antenna, have higher light gain, better, therefore, better dynamic range and ISO latitude. But this has its negative side as well. It's just like a large field full of satellite dishes of larger size versus a smaller field with tiny dishes. Enlarging in on that DX field yields more resolving information, whereas the larger dishes have better tonal gain i.e. dynamic range and better low signal, i.e. high ISO, i.e. low light capacity. You can have very high gain on large dishes, but low spectrum of resolution and result in image quality because the total picture of all light frequencies is more narrow with fewer dishes. You can have a lower gain on many smaller dishes, lower dynamic range, higher noise per frequency but the total spectrum of resolution is much more dense on the resultant image because the spectrum of image sampling here is higher per square millimeter. Just like a million rubber duckies trying to pick up a signal that, say, look five large satellite dishes are picking up on. Well, the five large satellite dishes have a lot better gain, a lot better signal-to-noise ratio, but if I want to zoom in, like say i got 10,000 rubber duckies over here, rubber ducky antennas like you see on a little handheld toy uh, you know little handheld uh, toy uh, transceivers you know if I'm going to take a sample of that and zoom in on it obviously I've got more information over here on the DX sensor than I have over here where I have these huge satellite dishes as an analogy of course obviously if I'm going to crop in here guess what I've got and guess what happens if I crop in over here on the signal. You have lower gain on those smaller dishes. You have lower dynamic range. Okay, Each larger pixel is like a faster lens. It's allowing for more light strikes, but not capture as wrongly thought. It's not capturing more light, but allowing for superior SNR, signal to noise ratio. Okay, Let's go on to video number two. I hope this wasn't too convoluted. I will make things very, very simple in video number two. I promise you. Okay, So hold on.